Hello everyone, today we are diving into the fascinating world of AI languages. We are going to be talking, of course, about two powerful siblings, we can say GPT-4 and GPT-4.0. Everyone is talking about it, so I needed to talk about it too. So buckle up, this is going to be an enlightening ride. Today I wanted to show you first of all how you can go ahead and test it in Azure. So let's go ahead and see. Great, so now to test this new model in Azure, you can go ahead and click the options to go to Azure OpenAI Studio. Inside the main screen, you can test, uh, click on the early access playground. And once you click in there, you will see available the new model in here. As all the other models, you can go ahead and click and play around with your pam parameters in here. But what we will do on this uh, video is to test it a little bit with for GPT-4 to understand at least the difference in a pretty high level. Great, so we have on the left GPT-4 as you can see, and on the right we have the preview of the new model. And uh, this is simple, an AI assistant that help people, helps people with information and I'm not providing any example or anything. I, again, in here the system message is the same, but let's go ahead and take a look at the parameters. We have max report in, a, in 800, we have temperature in 87, which is the same. Top uh, P, we don't see top P in here as a parameter. We don't have a spot, stop sequences. We have penal, frequency penalty and presence in zero. And we have the best of in here, which is not available in GPT-4. Best of basically, it says that it generates multiple responses and um, it replies or displays the one with the best probability across its all tokens, which means maybe it interacts and gives us the one that has uh, let's talk again. The unused candidate will still incur usage costs, so use this parameter carefully and make sure you sure to set the parameters to max response lens and then the trigger as well. Not that streaming will only work when this is set to one. Um, perfect. So now I have a question and I'm going to ask each one of them the same question at the same time. Let's go ahead and see what answer we can get. Great, so I'm going to ask the same question to each one of the models. It's uh, The question is, can you explain the concept of black holes and how they relate to Einstein's theory of general uh, relativity? So let's go ahead and ask each one of the models the, the questions. And we can already see a huge difference between each one of the models. As you can see, the new one is much more, much more faster than GPT-4. That's huge. Let's wait until we can see how much time it takes GPT-4 to give me a full answer. Great, so it finally finished. GPT-4 generated much more content, but at the same time, it looks like the new model processed the info. Like, uh, the information is absolutely different. Which one is best for me to use? I would need to uh, understand what the goal of my question sh would be. Um, so our progress, uh, tokens progress indicator says 634, and in this case, it says 306. That's another difference, which is from what we need. Um, of course, we will want less amount of tokens because to spend much more or less money, right? Great, so we have in here GPT-35 Turbo and GPT-40 Preview. And let's go ahead and ask the same question to each one of them. As we can see the difference on which one is faster, 
I wouldn't say that there is a huge difference between each one of them, but we need to remember that there are some difference between 3.5 and GPT-4, which are the, how they, the model handles text, audio, and vision. But, uh, and the other thing is that the new model has uh, a response audio input uh, as little as I, I remember it was milliseconds, 200 or ish millisecond, similar to human conversation, which is uh, different to a latency that GPT-35 Turbo has, which is um, approximately two to three seconds. Uh, the, finally, the performance of Core is good in general for both of them. It was not lighting, right? Now let's talk about the main difference between each one of the models. First of, uh, of all, let's talk about content window. Imagine a content window as the lens through which this model perceives the world. GPT-4 boosts varying content window sizes uh, ranging from 8K tokens to 128K tokens, if I'm not mistaken. That's like having a super-sized memory bag. On the other hand, GPT-4.0 keeps things efficient. It maintains content window, but focuses on speed and agility, as we saw on the demo. Now, the second thing we need to mention is uh, knowledge. Knowledge is power, right? Well, GPT-4 models have been trained on more recent information. They are like the well-read bookworms at the library. Meanwhile, GPT-4.0 inherits that intelligence, but optimizes across text, voice, and vision. It's the cool kid who excels in multiple subjects without breaking a sweat. The other thing, of course, is budget. Listen up. GPT-4 Turbo is wallet-friendly, as we all know, but GPT-4.0 takes the cake. It's like getting a premium experience at a fraction of the price. So if you are a savvy spender, GPT-4.0 might be your go-to. So I would say GPT-4 and GPT-4.0 are siblings with distinct personalities. So you need to understand when to use it and when you should not use it. Because as we said, we might need to get different information. So that depends on the model that you plan to interact with. I hope this was enlightening. It was for me and see you on the next one.